ISO 320, ISO 400, and what's my reference point? How things actually look in real life. Now let's move on to one of the stars of the show. This is going to be the this is going to be the most important video you watch on Canon lenses for the M50, M50 Mark II, M6 Mark II, basically any of those Canon mirrorless cameras. This is going to be the most important video you watch. So do not skip around because not only am I going to teach you about the lenses, I'm also going to teach you about photography and videography. And in this one video, you're going to learn more about photography and videography than you would in an entire semester of photography 101. This video is going to give you the confidence boost to take on any endeavor you so choose, whether it's wedding photography, landscape photography, church videos, YouTube videos, real estate shots, astrophotography, you name it. You're going to have the confidence to be able to take on any of those with the equipment that I give you today. Before I get started, I want to make sure that I'm clear about about terminology. So there's three main aspects of photography and videography that I want to get out of the way to make sure I define it before you get further into this video and you hear me talking about these terms and you don't know what I'm saying. Number one is ISO. ISO controls the brightness of your image. You usually want to have your ISO stick to 100. If it gets any higher, usually you're going to encounter some grain. Sometimes it's necessary as you'll see in this video with low light situations, but for the most part, you want to do everything in your power to keep that ISO at 100. Two is aperture. Aperture is how wide the aperture opens. So within the lens, there's an aperture and the more open it is, the more light gets let into it. So basically the lower the number on the aperture, it's referred to as an f-stop. So the lower the number, f1.4, f1.8, the lower that number, the wider the aperture. The higher that number, f22, f18, f16, the smaller that aperture, the smaller the aperture, so the less light gets let in. And three, shutter speed. Shutter speed is how long the shutter stays open. When you click on the shutter button, the shutter is going to open. Depending on how little or how long of a time the shutter is open, it's going to determine how much light goes into the shutter, therefore leading to how bright the image is. Now, it's not always about brightness. Sometimes it's about capturing things moving very quickly, and sometimes it's about capturing things in a blur. Things moving quickly, but you want to capture it in a blur to create an effect. So those are the three things that I need you to know before we get started. And I need you to know that all the products that I mentioned in this video today, all the Canon lenses, all the Canon cameras, all the products, all the equipment, is going to be in the description box below. And when you use those Amazon affiliate links, I get a small commission out of it. Now for full transparency, I have the Canon M6 Mark II here, which means what am I recording on? I'm actually recording on a Sony ZV-E10 15 millimeter. Now this image should look pretty good. It's gonna be color graded by the time you see it as well. It already looks good, but I add a little bit of color because I'm also African-American. The light is gonna reflect off my skin slightly differently. It's just the way it is. Just wanted to be transparent because the image that you're seeing now is slightly better than it would be if I did nothing to the video. But yeah, I have a Canon M6 Mark II here. And if I were to record this video, on this Canon camera, I would be using the Viltrox 23 millimeter. Now, I'm gonna talk in great detail about all of this equipment, but one of the first things that I will say for the Canon M6 Mark II, which is also gonna be similar to the M50 Mark II and the M50, you know, the Canon M6 Mark II is slightly more expensive just because it's a better camera overall. But if you're interested in a camera that can do it all, I mean do it all, I would highly recommend the M6 Mark II. So in this video, all the pictures and all the videos that I'm showing you have been shot on this Canon M6 Mark II. Take a look at that. It's actually a pretty nice camera. I recommend it. One of the things I do like about it is that it has this external viewfinder. So it comes off like this and it goes on unlike the Sony ZV-E10 that I have, which doesn't have this viewfinder, which makes it a lot easier to take photos with. So. The M6 Mark II, I recommend it, I recommend it for anything. You wanna do YouTube, do that. You wanna shoot weddings, get one of these. But yeah, I've used it all throughout making YouTube videos. I now switch in between the Sony ZV-10 and the M6 Mark II, because sometimes it depends on the purpose that I'm using it for. But let's get to the first lens that you need, and you're also gonna need something called an adapter. So this camera by itself is not gonna be able to fit an EFS mounted lens by itself. You're gonna need an adapter, and this is in the description box below, but it's basically just an EF to EOS M mount. This camera is an EOS M, and then the EF part is gonna be able to take these EFS lenses. So the first lens that we're gonna talk about is this 10 to 18 millimeter wide angle zoom lens. Take a look at that. So one of the things that I do like about this lens is that that 10 millimeter focal length is so wide. And as you can see from these pictures that I'm gonna be showing you, it's so wide and it creates such a wide plane that you're not gonna get from any other lens. That's what's special about this. It creates such a wide plane, but at the same time, 
you can zoom into 18. Now 18 by itself is still gonna be pretty wide, but that 10 is gonna add versatility to your lineup. So yeah, that 10 is gonna be probably your widest focal range. And as far as versatility, this is gonna allow you to be able to take real estate photography. It's gonna allow you to be able to vlog. You know, you can get good landscape shots, a nice wide angle of view. Let's say you have a big building in front of you, you're gonna be able to capture more of that in front of you. So let's take a look at some of these images that I took. And I only did this with the 10 to 18 millimeter, but I use an ND filter, which allows me to take pictures outside, which is kind of like sunglasses for your lens. So if it was too bright outside, you would use an ND filter. And that is also gonna be in the description box below. It's a KNF Concept ND filter, which I recommend. So let's take a look at what the video looks like on this harbor shot using the ND filter at 10 millimeters. So yeah, you're getting some pretty good videos with that 10 to 18 millimeter. Now I wanna show you something because this is what I'm talking about. You're gonna learn more in this video than you could in an entire semester of Photography 101. Now look at the skyline image at 18 millimeters. This was done on auto. The M6 Mark II has an auto setting for landscape. It looks pretty good, right? Well, actually the ISO is at 2000 right there. This is what it looks like when I manually correct it to what it actually looks like in real life. You see the difference? I actually had to bring the ISO all the way down to 840 in order to get this image. But this is just the power of understanding those three concepts, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. You can also see what this image looks like of this boardwalk in the low light when you manually control the ISO. And then here's some more pictures of the harbor. Now, I will say the 10 to 18 millimeter, you definitely don't want this as your only lens. You're gonna need this lens in conjunction with other lenses because this is gonna give you your wide view, but you need another lens to give you more of a portrait view. And the aperture range is gonna be pretty small for this one anyway, because it's gonna be 4.5 through 5.6. So it's not that small, but when you wanna get like a blurry background, you can't really use this for that. You could, but you're gonna be way better off with using like the Viltrox to get something like that with a 1.4 aperture. So lens number one down, four to go. All right, next on the list is going to be the kit lens. You need to have the kit lens, and I'll tell you why. The kit lens is actually gonna be one of your favorite lenses when you understand how photography works. So understanding ISO, understanding aperture, understanding shutter speed, these things are all gonna help you be able to take a nice picture with the kit lens. The kit lens is often regarded as a subpar lens. And in some ways it is. Like it's not gonna be able to get the background blur that this Viltrox is gonna be able to get because the Viltrox has a 1.4 aperture. This kit lens can only go to 3.5. That does not mean that 3.5 is bad. That just means that this lens doesn't do that. That doesn't mean that you can't get background blur. It just means that it's probably not gonna happen the way that you want it to. And I have an example of that. I was taking a picture of this pole and I did it both with the Viltrox and I did it with the kit lens. The Viltrox was able to separate the background for this picture quite well. The kit lens, however, wasn't able to do it at all. It's not capable of that but that doesn't mean that's a bad lens. It's 15 to 45 millimeter. This is a pretty good range for the price that the kit lens comes in at. And the kit lens is also gonna come with the camera if you buy the camera with a lens attached to it. If you buy the body only, obviously you won't get the kit lens, you have to just buy it. One of the cool things that I did with the kit lens while I was taking pictures with it is I use the manual focus ring. So I took the autofocus off, which sometimes could be dangerous, but other times when I'm pretty focused on taking pictures, it's fine. I use an out of focus shot, a half focus shot, and then an in focus shot to show you the quality that the kit lens has. And I was surprised. And I was surprised because the kit lens kind of puts in work. Check out these images taken at 45 millimeter. And then I also like the way that the kit lens captured the water, but I also thought that it performed well in low light situations as well, which is why the 15 millimeter and the 45 millimeter, that's why I think it looks so good. But it also looks so good because I was able to manipulate the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture as well. So this is one thing that you're learning looking at these images, looking to see what ISO and shutter speed I'm using. And remember, this is all manual. So yeah, get a kit lens. So I have ISO 320, ISO 400. And what's my reference point? how things actually look in real life. Now let's move on to one of the stars of the show. This is gonna be the Viltrox 23 millimeter. Take a look at this because this is a lens that you are going to want to get your hands on and it also mounts directly to the M6 Mark II. No need for the adapter and at a 1.4 aperture, yeah, you're gonna take some crisp blurry photos 
on this thing. This thing is also gonna be decent at low light as well. Let's take a look at some of these images that we gathered. So first, let's talk about the background separation. So this is just an example of midday background separation. I have some more photos of some buildings. So as you can see, this 23 millimeters actually pretty versatile. You get some landscape photography in there, and then you get some low light photography in here. And as you can see, I try to keep the ISO at 100 for these photos, but the image just looks amazing. At 1.4, it's trying to let as much light in as possible. And take a look at this. I crank the ISO up to 125 just to give it a little bit more light, make it a little brighter. And look at the type of image that we end up with. This is what Auto tried to produce. And I said, no, we're not doing Auto. With this Viltrox, this Viltrox in the manual mode, man, you could do some real damage with this. For a video like this, like a talking head video like this, I recommend this as well. I recommend this for portrait shots. This can be an all purpose lens. Obviously you can't use it for like long range photography, but if you just wanna take a camera out, I recommend having the Viltrox with you or the next lens on this list with you. But the Viltrox lens, this thing is a powerhouse. I will tell you this, if there was any one or two lenses I would tell you to buy from this list and you can't buy anything else, I would tell you to get this Viltrox and I will tell you to get the lens after this. First of all, the construction is amazing, all right? I love the focus ring, I love the metal body, I love the lens hood. This is a perfect lens, perfect for portraits, perfect for taking out and about. It's a prime lens, so there's only one focal length, but that's not as limiting as it sounds. And for what you're getting, you're gonna feel like you got this thing for a steal. Highly recommend the Viltrox 23 millimeter. And then my memory card just ran out of space, so I had to replace it with the 128 gigabyte memory. And I'll also link that in the description box below. You can check that out. The next lens on the list is going to be the 18 to 135 millimeter. And this lens does it all. It just does everything that you need it to do. It is the most versatile lens in this lineup going from 18 to 135, a huge focal length range. And I couldn't really be happier with it because you can't expect this thing to be able to take the crispest, most blurry background portrait photos, but you can count on it to be able to take some amazing photos in and of itself. And just taking a look at the photos that I was able to get with this camera, just going from 18 millimeters to 24 millimeters to 35 millimeters to 50 millimeters to 85 millimeters to 100 millimeters to 135 millimeters. This camera does it all. And a special shout out to the lovely lady who starred in the thumbnail for this video. That picture was taken with the 18 to 135 millimeter. But the way that this thing performed in low light situations, the way that it captured the moving water, the way that it captured moving targets, such as people on bicycles, the way that it captured the cranes, the way that it captured the color, the way that I was able to manipulate the ISO and the f-stop and the aperture in order to get the image that I needed. This is what you need. And going from auto to manual using this lens, you definitely need to have this lens in your lineup at some point. Just look at how the light reflects off the water at 135 millimeters, 800 ISO. I will say this is a lens that you need to have and there's not much else to say. Next lens I have to talk about is gonna be the 55 to 250 millimeter. And I will say that this lens is a lot of fun. This lens opens up your realm to images that you would not get otherwise. Because at 250 millimeters, you can get so close to a target. If you're taking nature shots, if you're taking sports photography, if it's a fast moving sport, you know, turn up the shutter speed a little bit, get a quicker shutter. If you wanna capture that blur, turn down the shutter speed a little bit. So one of the things that you should be learning from this video is how you can manipulate those three aspects of videography and photography to get the images and the videos that you want. ISO, aperture, shutter speed. Lower shutter speeds is gonna let in more light, but it's also gonna give you more of a blurry image. Higher shutter speeds is going to capture faster, quicker moving targets, but it's also going to lower the brightness because less light is getting let in because the shutter is open for less time. Aperture, wider aperture, more light. Higher apertures are gonna let in less light. But this 55 to 250 millimeter, this thing did some work and I love it in the low light. I love all these lenses in the daytime, but I think low light is where you can see how your images are gonna stand out. I think any lens is typically gonna look good in the day, but I think you need a special type of lens, a special type of camera to make a nighttime image look good, just because you have to let in so much more light in those situations. And this 55 to 250 did just that. So I'm more impressed by the nighttime shots I was able to get with this lens. And all in all, I think you should have this entire lineup. But if you had to choose only two, I would go Viltrox 23 millimeter, and the Canon 18 to 135 millimeter focal length. I think those two do the best job for versatility and getting what you need 
out of cameras, whether you want to do YouTube, whether you want to do action shots, do wedding photography, landscape photography, real estate photography, you can use a wider angle. You have the 18 millimeter part, which can be considered wide angle. And then this M6 Mark II, this M6 Mark II is probably one of the best cameras on the market still, even though it's been out for a little bit, but any of the Canon mirrorless cameras that you get are going to still be pretty good, but I especially recommend this one. I love the 4K footage that you can get. I love the image quality that you get, but as far as taking pictures, I handheld some of the shots, but I also put them on a tripod as well, and I can show you that KNF tripod. A lot of KNF products out here. And as far as the lights that I use, I use these newer lights. That's the name of the company, it's called Newer. I don't know if it's Newer or Newer but I use their lights. And as far as the mic that I use, I use this Blue Yeti mic. You can check it out in the Amazon affiliate link below. I got memory cards in there, I got camera equipment in there, I got recording equipment in there. I'll even throw this mic stand in there. And then I edit my videos on a MacBook Pro. I'll even throw that in there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot. Check me out in the next video. I do credit card videos mostly. So if you're considering funding this large purchase and trying to get something back, I recommend you check out this video next and use this purchase to get your sign up bonus for that card. And I'll even teach you how to get this card. Thank you for watching. Watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.